broadcasting from Orchard Park, New York, and Boca Raton, Florida, it's the Freight 360 Podcast. From freight broker sales tips to sports talk, this podcast is all about helping you grow as a freight broker. We're your hosts, Nate Cross and Benjamin Kowalski. Let's talk freight. Welcome back for another episode of the Freight 360 Podcast. It's episode 234, to be exact. Um, if you are new, we appreciate you joining us. Check out all of our other content. Um, you can go right to Freight360.net. You'll see blogs, podcasts, YouTube videos, and you can check out the Freight Broker Basics course as well. It's a it's an online course taught by us in conjunction with DAT on how to start your brokerage and succeed as a freight broker. Uh, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you're on YouTube, uh, leave us a review, leave us comments. Uh, all that engagement helps us get in front of more people and um, share all the good good content that we've got here. So, uh, Ben, what's happening, man? I still can't get used to the fact that we don't have the song play to me and you as we start the show. Like we've done that for so long and now that we have the new software that it just does it before you upload it. It's just yep. like, I'm so used to hearing just the beginning of the Joker kind of come in like. Yeah. Yeah. I can play it for you, man. Uh, good deal. Love it. Um, well, dude, I'm excited. It's we're, uh, we're into March now. I know we'll technically our last episode, um, dropped in March, but we're getting further into the year. The weather's warming up different places around the country. And, um, yeah, man, I'm excited to, to get down to Florida later this month, get to hang out with you, do some, some content in person and just get some sunshine, you know? And dude, weather's gotten nice. It went up to about, it got back up into the 80s this week. I mean, like, yeah, humidity's kind of there, but weather weather has been nice at least for the past week or so. And For sure. At least the outlook looks like as far enough out as I can see, it's going to stay this way. So you should have some at least warmer weather when you come we're, down. We're going to be renting a pontoon boat a couple days around Easter when I'm down in Fort Pierce and hoping that we don't have any weather issues that cause us to not be able to do it, but... I've been lucky be every every time that I've gone down there in the past and done a boat day. We've had beautiful sunny weather. So good stuff. Uh sports. Uh Cognizant Ace. Classic was up the old Honda Classic, which yeah. had been the Honda Classic forever. They just changed the name. Oh. That just finished Monday, actually. What is it called now? It's called the Cognizant Classic. So they just changed um, sponsors. Yeah, Honda no. <laughs> dropped. They've, Honda's had it though for like, I think like twenty. I think it was like one of the longest sponsored events, like on the PGA. The, so I remember for a long time. Yeah, um, yeah, that just wrapped up. There's some rain Sunday, so it went into Monday. To be honest, like I don't even remember who won. I'm looking it up now. I know Rory played really well, and they said he's going to be looking pretty good going to the next tournament. But I think it was actually a local kid um, that won it. Austin Eckroat. Yeah. Nice. Um, baseball preseason is underway for anybody out there that's a, a baseball fan. I'm getting I'm getting excited, man. Now that we're out of NFL, I'm usually on the on the baseball fan wag or bandwagon as a fan all uh, spring and into the summer as we get ready. Uh, but hey, I mean, before you know it, it's gonna be NFL draft time in just a couple months. So that's pretty much all I got for sports, man. Hey, Same I like here. that. I like if you're watching on YouTube, Ben. I like your uh, free 360 mug. For sure, buddy. I dig it. Quite um, a few of these around the country at the moment. I'm sure. Yeah, we've sent out over the years. There definitely is. Definitely is. Um, news. Anything stick out to you? Not really. Everything I looked at, like, uh, I think, like, somebody from Truck Stop predicted he thinks the spot rates will come up sometime in the fourth quarter. A couple other CEOs said, I don't know, this month has been really slow. There was a pretty big uptick in January that was weather-related in the spot market that everyone kind of saw, but it seems like the market has fallen right back kind of down to where you kind of expect it this time of year. I mean, yeah. I'd seen – I didn't look – really in detail at it but i mean a few of the articles i saw reference like lowest load to truck ratio since like 2020 2019 somewhere around there but so you know it's what's interesting low. so one of the one of the news bits we put in our newsletter uh this week was about um we i highlighted some 
some like regulation stuff and Congress is looking to lower the driving age to 18. So they've, they've had the exemption for military military. If you had driving experience in the service, they would use that and let you be 18, but not looking at lowering it. Um, but there's, I mean, I think it's good overall, but I think the reality is right now it's, that's not going to really, that's not yeah. anything that we need is more capacity. Um, but again, market cyclical, it will change. And our, another wild story. And I forgot about this is the truck that was hanging off the bridge and uh saw that don't know what happened though. Will? what did happen i just saw the memes and the pictures uh, vehicle collision. steven sent us it yeah so oh, okay. uh, i'll just read off our thing it said uh louisville firefighter played a crucial role in rescuing a semi-truck driver who was left dangling from the clark memorial bridge above the ohio river after a vehicle collision caused her to almost plunge into the water the rescue operation lasting nearly 40 minutes involved Cardin rappelling down to the truck cabin and securing the driver before both were safely hoisted back onto the bridge. Um, it said the miraculous nature of the truck's position, which avoided falling into the, into the water was, uh, was just incredible. It was just insane. If you saw the video and said it resulted from a vehicle losing control and striking the semi truck after an initial collision, uh, it left two others seriously injured. So, um, if you have kids that watch Paw Patrol, the Paw Patrol movie, the first one, like literally starts with what looked like it was on TV last year, like a truck dangling off a bridge. But instead of uh, uh, Chase and the other Paw Patrol Sky. save the day, uh, it was yeah. a it was a firefighter in real life. So, and this was from a car accident, not a turtle crossing the road. You ever see that movie with your daughter? I, I'm sure I have. I mean, I've watched every one of the cartoons. I don't, yeah. I don't remember that scene in that movie, but I mean, for sure. I mean, all the Paw Patrol characters are all over my living room. Sky <laughs> is her favorite. So for yep. sure. <laughs> yep. Yep. Gotcha. Well, that's news. Um, well, cool. We got a fun episode today. We did one a couple of weeks ago on um, what your sales pipeline should look like. And we wanted to expand it today and talk about the prospecting, um, the process of prospecting shippers, everything from what to expect when you're making those calls, what the outcome of the calls uh, look like, and maybe some of the hurdles or objections you'll run into. Uh, we'll see where the conversation goes. We're just going to kind of wing it here, man, and shoot from the hip. Um, yeah, I got some ideas. I think we'll, we'll role play a few. We got a a lot of feedback from the last episode we did a couple weeks ago on this. Um, so. Do you guys want more of it? We're going to do more for, you know, that's the whole point of the show. We want to answer the questions that are relevant to where you guys are now. I think we could do FOB. I definitely want to do follow-ups. Maybe we can do another role play on some intros and go through the structure of really like, the thing I think we didn't really touch on last that I think would be good is is like how to play into a follow-up, right? I think most people approach a follow-up as like a standalone call as opposed to part of your call process and we can talk through that a little bit and role play. So let's dig into it, man. Yeah. Faux show. Sure. Faux show. Sure. Um, sweet. So um, I'll try to use some of the most recent cold calling sessions I've done with folks to, cause I mean, the market's different. Like conversations that were had two and a half years ago are so different than what people are having right now. Okay. That is exactly where I wanted to lead off from expectations, right? Your expectations should be aligned with the market, not with your personal desires, right? And what do I mean by that? Especially if you're new or even if you've had a book and you lost a portion of it recently, like you're hungry, man, you're aggressive. You want to go and bring more business in, right? That's clear. I think a lot of people in the market are in this position. Hell, even the brokers I know that are doing well are in this position, right? So the thing about expectations is you really want to think a minute about what the person you're talking to is expecting and what they're hearing. Because again, just like in a conversation, if you're way out of tune with what they're expecting or feeling like you just seem out of touch, you don't seem tied in and you seem out of place in a way that really is hard for them to even connect with you if they want to. Right. Yeah. And, and what does that really mean? Like, Nay's a really good point. Like what is different about the market now than it was two and a half year, years ago? Like what's well, the, the stage? Thing, 
Yeah. So, and I feel like we literally talked through this in 2021 and talked about how like, this is a great time to prospect. The hard thing is to get a truck because everybody had trouble getting trucks in 2021. Um, so what's different is where is capacity now versus where it was yes. two and a half to three years ago. So we're in a loose market right now, which means that there is a, there's an abundance of capacity on average. This is a, at a, a national scale we're looking at here, not just a specific region or market or lane. Um, but it's not very hard for customers to get a truck in front of them, whether it's directly with a motor carrier or through a freight broker, because there's the amount of demand to ship is um, opposite of where it was a few years ago. So plenty of trucks available. It's not hard to get one. And with that being the case, they can usually get one for cheap. So there's a lot of price sensitivity right now because they know this is the this is the time where they can make up for their extremely high freight rates that they dealt with three years ago. Um, but if you go back to 2021, what we were dealing with was I can't get a truck. And if I can't get a truck, I'm not going to have my goods delivered to my customers. And that's bad service on my part. So we were seeing customers taking calls from anybody. And that's why a lot of people got into brokerage. A lot of carriers were adding to their fleets or opening up new businesses because there was such a high demand and um, very tight capacity. So I like that you said that, that you should have your expectations set based on where the market is. Because you could deal with a tight capacity market, a loose capacity market like right now, or one of those transition phases. Whether you're, if you're transitioning from tight to loose, is going to be a little different than how you play it when you're transitioning from loose to tight. Because you have conversations with customers about what's coming up in the future or what they've dealt with in the past. And they're going to be dependent on what everyone's been dealing with. So typically, a prospecting call, uh, a great thing to do besides just getting information is to to – problem solve and a lot of times that that begins with finding out what the problem is and sometimes shippers don't necessarily know what their problem is they just know that they're having problems and they're they'll, they'll they'll give complaints about x y and z if if you have the the time to to speak with them and hear about it but they don't know that their problem is that oh you're doing this in a way that i wouldn't recommend right it might it could be that all they're doing is getting the cheapest carrier possible and for that reason, they have service failures and delays because trucks are breaking down because they have poor maintenance um, or they're dealing with high cost spend because they're not keeping their brokers and carriers honest by um, entertaining rates and opportunities with other people that are out there. So think about where the market is. So if you listen to this this podcast when it comes out, you know we're in a soft market. But if you listen to it a year or two years from now in 2025 or 2026, we don't know where the market's going to be then. I, I hope it's, you know, a, a tighter market than we're seeing right now because it's, it's been tough for a lot of people, but keep it all in perspective because the questions you ask, the conversations you have are going to be different based on where the market is. And if you're, for sure. you're watching on YouTube, Ben's camera is doing some wonky Dude, stuff. It's crazy. I tried to it's update the firmware. It's stuck on autofocus, even though it says manual focus. So every time I move, it's trying to track me and it's really off. Well, just take a motion sickness pill if you're watching on YouTube. For sure. And I really wish that I could get it to not do what it is. Pause this for a second. Can you? Let me yep. see if I can. I have no idea. Tired of struggling to find accurate rates and the right cares for your freight? With DAT1, you can access more than 500 million posted loads and trucks every year. That's three times more capacity than any other load board. Plus, their integrated freight management system makes it easy to cover loads 24-7. They have the most trusted network of carriers, brokers, and shippers in the country. You'll get real-time rates on every lane so you know exactly how much a shipment will cost before you commit to it. Plus, you get instant access to top bids from qualified carriers around the country. Get 10% off your first year of DAT1 when you visit the link in the show notes. Blue Book Services is the resource you need if you're transporting fresh produce or lumber. Their online databases contain thousands of companies throughout the produce and lumber industry supply chains. You can easily search their databases to generate new sales leads. Blue Book's credit ratings help you avoid companies with high credit risk, and their team can help resolve disputed loads. To learn more, go to ProduceBlueBook.com or LumberBlueBook.com and click Join Today. In freight, time is money. 
and efficiency is key. That's where Levity comes in. Imagine automating your email operations to do more with less effort. Levity connects directly to your inboxes, extracting vital information from emails and attachments in real time. It seamlessly integrates with your TMS, empowering you to quote faster, build loads more efficiently, and book more freight in less time. Whether it's incoming emails from shippers or carriers, Levity's got you covered. It understands any language, any format, and even interprets non-standard formatting. Visit levity.ai today to sign up and get started. All right, P- picking the recording back up here. I'm not even going to cut any of that out because uh, again, I'll give our listeners a little, a little uh, glimpse into the technical difficulties. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, you have to set your expectations based on where the market is. Um, what you got? Yes. So where the market is, right? So in a tight market, something like 2020, 21, right? The way I the way I look at it, and I'm a visual person, but it's you have two opposite ends of the spectrum, service and price, right? So in a very loose market, shippers are very price sensitive. They don't care as much about service. And that's for a very simple reason. It's very easy to get trucks. And when it's very easy to get trucks, they tend to have less service failure. Yes, things still go wrong. And that's where you'll find the opportunities, right? So again, in the market we're in right now, you're tending to see shippers that care more about price than service because they're able to cover their loads. Very few of their loads do they not have a truck booked for it. Now, the issues they can still have, though, and a market that is primarily price driven and not service. You still have trucks that don't pick up. You still have miscommunication. You still have issues with older trucks that are very cheap to book, right, that don't have good maintenance records that aren't making it to either the pickup or delivery on time. So there are still service issues in a market like today. They're just far less frequent, right? Now, the exact opposite, 21 market, like everybody needs a truck and price doesn't matter because service, if you have zero service and you can't get your loads booked, right? Like yeah. price doesn't matter because your loads aren't getting picked up and delivered. So these are your two extremes. Now, in the old market, you know, 21, 22, where it's really tight, like you can kind of call anybody and they are almost all having a problem with service. So those are where your conversations are going to go. That's where they're directed because that's likely where their need is. You don't know, you don't want to assume, but that's where you'll likely, it's a good place to look in a conversation to find where their need is, right? In the market today, knowing that their primary objective is to be honest, like they don't need to work with new brokers. They're getting their loads covered. Their brokers are probably servicing them at whatever level that they're okay with. So you've got to give them a reason to want to open up the books to let you come in and become a new vendor. Right? Yeah, let me hop in here. And so, and this is one of the things, obviously, that we're in this market right now. You get a lot of uh, shippers with, as soon as they're on the phone, they'll just tell you like, we're not adding anybody new right now. Yep. And you could totally, you know, acknowledge that like, Hey, I totally understand. And I like, this is where I like a lot of your approach of, um, I'm, I'm not, Let's role play it. what's that? Let's role play it. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll play, right. I'll play the shipper and you can be Mr. Broker calling me ring, ring, ring. Well, first of all, let's, let's set the, let's set the expectations here. So we're in the current market. What's, what's my commodity that I'm shipping? What's the size? Um, so you ship produce, you ship bag lettuce, um, you're a small to medium sized shipper in California and you do ship around the country, at least from what I can tell from the little research I've done it. Companies right. so I, I do know. lettuce out of you. California, reefer yep. freight. Got it. All right. Great. Ring, ring, ring. Hi, ABC Produce. Hey, is Nate there? Yep, this is. Hey, Nate, how's it going? Ah. Doing all right. How's it going? Yeah. Hey, not much. I was giving you a buzz. To be honest, the reason I was giving you a call, I got a handful of guys that deliver out. Hang well, on, let me actually... put you on hold real quick. All right, go ahead. Hey, no worries, man. Nate, like I was saying, the reason I was giving you a buzz is I got a handful of guys that deliver right into your, honestly, right down the road from you. A couple of them drive past your warehouse literally a few times a week. And for the past handful of weeks, hell, maybe longer, they've asked me to give you a ring, just understand what you guys are doing a little bit and see if they might be a fit to, I don't know, run some backhauls for you if there was even a need there. And like I said, I told them I'd give you a ring, kind of learn a little bit more about how you guys are operating. 
Hey, appreciate the call. We, we've been pretty good on our capacity right now, though. Our, our go-to guys have been just fine and haven't had any issues with trucks falling off lately, but I do appreciate the call. Oh, for sure. Nate, and to be honest, that's exactly what I would have expected. I mean, and to be honest, hell, I don't even know if we would even be a fit to work together. Um, I don't even know if we'd be able to work with you either. But again, like I said, I at least wanted to give you a ring because I promised a few of the guys have been working with me for a while that I would at least give you a buzz. I don't know. Do you got a minute or two? Did I catch you at a bad time? No, I got a couple minutes. What's, what's going on? Yeah. So what I was really curious a little bit about is most of my guys that are coming out of your area, the ones that are literally driving past you, they're all kind of going to the same places on a weekly basis. Do you guys ship back out to the Midwest at all outbound on any of your lanes? We do. Yeah. I mean, we, we get about as far as the Mississippi. Uh, that's about it though. Where, are any of your volumes any concentrated in any specific area where you guys kind of ship to more to one area in the Midwest by chance? I got to make something up here. Uh, yeah, you know, we do a, a bit to St. Louis, um, Kansas City. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I can't I can't think of the time I had to make up a story like this. But yeah, yeah, no. you know, all those places. Sure. And yeah, the reason I ask is like one of my guys, actually, he's based out of St. Louis. And again, one of his backhauls that he runs back out of there. I know he's pulling a lot of spot loads out of the market right now to get himself back home. But like I said, again, Nate, I have no idea if it would even be a fit. I'm sure you guys are doing pretty well. I mean, how are your service and rates been so far? I'm guessing you guys are playing pretty good rate and getting pretty decent service. We have. We've got a, we've got a lot of relationships with local reefer fleets here in Southern California. So, um, you know, we tend to get first priority as a, as a direct shipper to them on their capacity. And it's really been easy to get stuff secured lately. Um, if you have... You know, you said you got guys that are trying to backhaul. I, you know, I'm I'm not saying that we would drop any of our providers, but as as uh, our business increases, I'd be you know, when we're looking to onboard additional providers, I'd be interested to see what kind of rates and service you pro- could provide with a backhaul carrier. If you are, um, if you aren't just making this up as a bluff right now, and you actually do have guys that are going back that way. Yeah, for sure. And like I said, Nate, like, I don't know if the specific dates would work versus your loads or if if any of this would even work out between you and us and even working together. But like I said, I I think it might be worth the conversation down the road. Let me ask you one more question, if you don't mind. How did things kind of shape up last year? And, you know, how did you guys finish out the year? How did it kind of play out? You guys kind of land where you expected on volume and kind of sales? Um, our volume was down just a tad. I mean, the, the reality is, is I, I know the, the market in general has done different things, which is why, you know, capacity is where it's at, but people are still eating my lettuce. So for sure, uh, it's actually been kind of nice for us because we got hammered with uh, freight costs three years ago and it kind of made up for it the last year or so. For sure. Well, last year, speaking of like, when did your peak, when did your uh, season start to pick up? Where were you guys at? Like you shipped the most volume per se, like give or take you guys kind of around like mid March. I would expect you guys, a lot of the other customers I work in your area, you know, their volume is picking up around beginning of April. Did you guys see around the same thing last year? Side note, I don't ship any lettuce out of Southern California right now. So I'm just going to make this up. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, right around March. For sure. Yeah. Like I said, you know what? I, actually, I got to run. I got another customer giving me a buzz right now. But hey, Nate, appreciate the time. I'll try to catch up with you a little bit down the road and see if I might be able to find something out or at least be able to discuss it and see if maybe the details work for you. That sounds good. What was your name again? Uh, ben. All right. Sounds good, Ben. Sounds Thanks. good, Nate. Hey, I'll catch up with you later, buddy. All right. So, so we'll we'll unpack that call. First of all, <laughs> I swear the next the next uh, mock call we do, we're going to have to have some more concrete data. I'm really bad at making stuff up on the fly, but um, there was a lot of good takeaways in my opinion there. And I think you did a really good job. What I like about your, and I don't ever do this, but I think it's effective for you is you don't say your name or the company that you're with when you open up a call. And here's why, right? So I talked about this to the few other clients in the past couple of weeks, right? And the thing is with an opening call, right? Most people say their name and announce it because it makes them feel better about calling somebody they don't know out of the blue. And it's like, Hey, if I announce who I'm calling from and who I'm with, right? Like you should feel a little bit okay with the fact that I'm calling out of the blue. It kind of alleviates some of this inner tension that the person making the phone call has, right? It's if I tell you who I'm from, 
that's who's really calling you, not me, right? And it makes you feel a little better when you're doing this, especially if you're new. Here's the reality though. The reality is, is if you call anybody that you actually would be talking to and actually had a reason to call them, what do you do when you call anybody you've ever talked to or that you actually have something to say to? Like, you just say that thing. Like, yeah. You don't the ever only, call somebody you've known or worked with. The reason that I'm, I say my name and I, like a lot of times when I've coached people through it is so many times I hear on the air on the phone, what was your name or where are you calling from? Who is this? Yep. And I end up saying it anyway. So like, but again, this is, this is a great example because you and I are two different people and it's, this goes to prove that there's not one perfect way and one way that will never work. It's a matter of how you're going to craft your, your, your call and the, the order yes. of your call. Because if you, you realize by the end of the conversation, you had Mr. Shipper's attention, um, somewhat right we had that's the hardest thing to do and the I hardest to, thing to do is that to I get your to attention your name otherwise it would have felt like an ingenuine call to me right and for sure right like i know the hardest thing to do at least from my point of view and a cold call is to get you to talk to me to get you comfortable and to get you to feel like it's a conversation and to get into that rhythm right so i know for sure if i can get you talking and you care at all you'll ask my name and you'll have it you'll probably forget it two hours from now, once you go back to your job anyway, but you'll get it. And the second thing is if I announce it, most of the time they're just saying that because they're being polite and it's a habit. And the reality is they forget anyway. What's really important is I get you to talk to me, to get you used to talking to me and to make you feel like I'm not going to badger you and call you for something I need, right? Because that's why your guard's up. So if I can get you to talk to me first, I get you to open up a little bit and get into the rhythm of a conversation, just like you did in the role play, is what most people do. Hey, yeah, I didn't catch your name again, especially if you can get them talking. Hey, what was your name again? And now when they're asking me, they're genuinely interested or care what my name is, and they're far more likely to remember it anyway than if I just announce it and then go about my thing, right? Agreed. While we're, while we're on here, I want I'm going to go on Produce Blue Book. Um, so anyone that's listening that does ship lettuce out of like Salinas Valley or anywhere in that California region probably is laughing at us, but I'm, I want to know. So, uh, so we can at least put out the right answer for anyone that's curious. What what did we say it was? Was it lettuce or cabbage? Yeah, I said lettuce. Lettuce. Okay. I'll pull up lettuce and I mean, Cali ships year round. So, and also before I would have made the call, so before I made the call, I would have looked that up obviously like, and known what that answer was so that I didn't, but you can see, and this is like, as a side note with, if you're doing produce, like I can see, um, California is also a very large state that has very varying levels of climate from its Northern to its Southern end. Um, but you know, when you've got States like New Jersey, New York, uh, Colorado, that you you're not getting availability for shipping until the springtime, you know, then the rest of that lettuce in the winter months is going to be coming from the warmer places like Arizona, California, New Mexico. So very likely my peak time would be um, probably around the time that you mentioned. Well, you're right. And you know what else I would have asked? And I knew this after, and I would have had this prepped if I knew the commodity were good, but I would have said, Hey, you guys are probably going to be moving your operations back from Arizona back over to Cali sometime in the next few weeks. When do you guys typically make that transition? Right. Yep. Now, why do I do that, right? Because that little piece of information that you can get pretty easily, right, makes me come across as if I'm much more educated and much more experienced in that space without me telling you, I ship all this lettuce. I do this all the time. I've been doing this for years. That sounds like I'm gloating or bragging. And it seems like it's not really genuine because people kind of don't talk like that either, right? But when you talk to somebody that is experienced in the thing you're going to hire them for, they'll weave things in the conversation that give you the impression that they know what they're doing. So that's why these little things really do add a lot of value when you weave them into the conversation, because it gives you the perception that I am not just calling you because you're one phone number on a list and I don't know who the hell you are, what you do to begin with. So uh, here's a super simple takeaway that some people don't think about. And it's not because they're arrogant. It's just because they maybe were never 
taught this or learned this is that if you can just put yourself in that shipper's shoes and in there, put yourself in their job and think about what's important to them, it'll give you a way different yes. perspective on how to handle that call. Because if yes. I'm like, for example, the uh, an industry that's taking a hit right now is the oil industry. So if you do anything with like drilling, crane mats, um, fracking, et cetera, um, when oil prices are high, they want to pump, pump, pump and make their profits. When oil prices are low, you know, it's the opposite. So right now there's less work happening in the oil fields, less transportation. Um, so if I can go into the call knowing that not only is it probably not hard for them to find trucks, but they're probably extremely frustrated with their, their company's profits. If, and again, if it's a traffic manager, pro they probably don't really care. They're just getting a salary. Um, but if you're talking to like uh, someone higher up or maybe the owner of a, of a small business that's impacted by a certain um, current event or current market for their type of product, they're going to have a way different, you know, they're not just worried about trucks showing up or trucks being cheap. They're worried about like, dude, our industry is suffering right now. Think about like wildfires <laughs> right now in Texas or in, we've, they've been in California in the past. Think about anybody that's owned a uh, crop or, cattle or anything that's being impacted by that, you can get into their emotional side by, first of all, understanding that because you thought about it beforehand, and then like very gently asking them about that kind of stuff. So I think yes. one of the easiest, easiest things is um, like, ask about the past. You know, and like you, you asked me how was last year, like when was whatever, but I oftentimes say like it, it, you know, to get around the whole, I'm not calling you right now to ask for a load right now is asking about the past and ask about the future. The reality is it's, it's a soft market right now, but if I want to plant seeds for when the market does turn and it will eventually turn, it always does. It always has, and it always will. I want to understand what it was like the last time the market was tight, which is how was the past and what they're expecting for the future. The, an, another tight market and the transition into it. So uh, sure. those are great questions. I, but I, I also want to point this out. The roll call or roll, I don't know, mock call that we just did. Uh, don't expect every time you make a like dial phone number to have that conversation. Um, sure. I'll say not, more than 90% of the time, you will, not, you will not have that conversation. You either have the wrong number, no one answers, you get a voicemail, you get a receptionist. Um, they answer and they're busy and hang up on you or they tell you they don't have time to talk. Um, you're going to spend a lot of your time dealing with not even having that conversation. And the good thing about that is um, don't be so scared. Pick up the phone that first time because guess what? You're probably not going to have a conversation with that person. And I will tell you this, when you get like a receptionist or um, if you get through a phone tree, I personally find that like you can loosen up your mentality and like get really um, yeah, it's like loose and like more comfortable in your own voice on a call to a, a new company. Cause you're talking to someone that, you know, it doesn't matter what they think. And they're not a decision. Exactly. Maker. You can kind of like shoot this shit with the receptionist for 30 seconds or a minute and kind of get yourself in the mode. So, you know, let's do that one. Let's do that one next. Or maybe right? the receptionist, you be the receptionist and I or the want operator you to, or whatever. Yeah. I want you to scream me as the gatekeeper, right? Like ring, ring, ring. Uh, hold on. Before we do this, I'm going to be a, you pick. Yeah. I'm going to be like a, let's say I'm a receptionist. We're a, we're a mid-sized company. Um, I'm familiar with the different departments, but I don't know exactly what they all do. Um, so yeah, we'll do that. Got it. Ring, ring, ring. Uh, ABC widgets. How can I help yeah, is you? Jim there. Is Jim there? Uh, Jim who? I there's we've got a lot of gyms that work here. Yeah, no worries. Jim Martin. Can you can you patch me through? Um Jim Martin. Hang on one second. Type, 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 type. Jim Martin. Uh Jim's not with us anymore. Are you looking for it looks like he was in our uh logistics department? Is that who you're looking for? Yeah, he was. He was in the transportation department. He had the fun job of dealing with all the trucks over there. All right. Uh, let me see. It looks like looks like John Doe is the new replacement. Can I can I ask who's calling and what about? 
Yeah, it's Ben. I was giving him a buzz about a driver and a, some of the carriers. Is he around? Um, he should be. Let me take a look. And yep, uh, I can forge you through to him right now. Great. So unpack, right? In well, that one thing one. I will say that you didn't add in, and I do, I do it and I prefer this, is find out his, or John Doe's extension before you yes. get transferred. Because I've had people um, give it to me willingly and i've had people tell me like no like yep I, like they they For know sure. they're they're doing their job like don't give out my extension you can forward me through um but yeah so we'll, we'll unpack that call there so i, I threw a curveball by saying that you, whatever the dude's name you gave me didn't work there anymore and uh, here's where i played that i played that one different and there's really two approaches the two approaches i have for gatekeepers are one keep the pressure and make it feel urgent, right? Because a gatekeeper's job, everyone thinks their job is to keep people out, but it's really a two-way street. A gatekeeper is just as much penalized for letting somebody that shouldn't get through as preventing somebody that should get through, through, right? Yep. So if you need something and they feel that you should be getting through, they will tend to put you through most of the time. That was why I kept that urgent sense of tone in my voice, right? And the example I usually give for people that are doing this is if you've learned to cover loads or you know do check calls or set appointments, when you've got a truck that is stuck at the dock and the guy can't find where to check in and you really need to speak to that person, this is what you sound like. And ironically, usually when you're calling that same person for the same reason, you never get screened. But then when you call them, when you're prospecting two days later, they screen you. It's because you sound different, not because they're doing anything different, right? So if you can sound as much like you do when there's literally a truck at the dock and you need to speak to somebody because the driver's yelling at you because he's been there for 40 minutes and no one's walked out to talk to him yet, that's what I sound like. And I try to get myself in that mindset. And that's that one approach. Now, had you screened me and went, sorry, he's not available, um, just tell me what this is for and I'll take a message, right? And we can even pick it up from there because I'm now going to prospect you, right? Like, and literally I'm going to start engaging with you. Like, oh, hey, I'm sorry. I didn't catch your name yet. What was your name again? I'm sorry. You want to actually do this right now? Yeah, pick it up. Right. Go ahead. That, that is more. Nate. Yeah, Nate. You know what? I am just having a heck of a time getting a hold of John over there. And to be honest, any help you could give me, I would just greatly appreciate. Um, is there a better day of the week or time of day that I, it would be easier for me to reach John or when he's not going to be caught up in meetings? I, I don't want to call, I don't want to be calling you every day. And again, I just need to talk to about something quick about a couple carriers. Curious if you could give me any help. I'd really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, our our traffic department they tend to wrap up most of the guys are gone by three o'clock um i know john does stick around here till 4 30 or 5 most days so i would try maybe at the at the tail end of a day the next time oh i really appreciate that hey let me ask you i mean wow i mean you probably know all the ins and outs over there how long how long have you been with acme uh, well, I've actually only been here for uh, three months so i don't i don't know uh, everybody too well um but, you know, it's it's been a fun learning experience so far. I'll tell you what, you could have fooled me. All day long. I mean, you sure you sure sound and have the confidence as somebody that's been there for a long time. I mean, I, I was going to go back to that same question. And I lost my train of thought. <laughs> no, no, but, but like, so here, here's what's good. And I want to talk about that a little bit, because if you talk to the gatekeeper or the operator or someone in, in the wrong department, there's going to be such a vast, like a wide range of their experience level and what they know and who they know. I've talked with people that they're literally just like an operator who doesn't know what the transportation department does. Besides, it probably involves some kind of like trucks or drivers, right? Yep. Um, and then you've you talk to people who they know exactly why you're calling and they try to screen you. You know what I mean? Exactly. Uh, like very, very heavily. Uh, are you a freight broker? You know, all of our freight's customer routed, stuff like that. Um, or, you know, he doesn't take calls. Um, you got, you know, any any inquiries, just leave a message with me and we'll pass it on to him. Stuff like that. Yep. So, you know, I like that you ask questions. I'm like, how long have you been in this business? You sound, you know, sound like you've been here for a while. Um, somebody is kind of brand new. That can be a really good thing because if you can make friends with them and, co you know, kind of become buddy-buddy, 
they're going to give you preference down the road when you need to get through to somebody versus, Hey, I have no idea who this random stranger calling me is, but Hey, I've talked to Ben, uh, you know, about once a month. And I don't necessarily know exactly what he's, what his business with John Doe is, but you know, it's pleasant every single time that I talk to him. For sure. I mean, those two strategies, that was how I did most of the work I did to get on board with the military and all of my big shippers because I couldn't get to any of the guys in procurement, couldn't reach any of the people because of the way the phone system shielded. You couldn't tell back then who it was who. So your really only path forward are through the people that usually at least had some insight, right? And again, yeah. I don't need to learn everything from the gatekeeper. I need like one piece of information. <clears throat> like the previous, I need to know that John is there instead of the guy I thought was there, right? Yep. I Some idea of when and where or who, any one of those questions, right? If you get one of them, you can usually follow up with this person next week, the gatekeeper, and then speak directly to them. And I can't tell you how surprised and appreciative A gatekeeper is when you give them the attention and you actually talk to them just like their people, not somebody standing in the way to the other people, right? You'll be shocked at how much they're willing to tell you if you can connect with them and have a real conversation with the gatekeeper. Because again, most gatekeepers, especially if you got an executive gatekeeper, they know the boss's schedule better than the boss does. They know when their meetings are, when they show up, when they leave, when you can reach them, when they have idle time and when isn't a good time. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, trying to think other stuff here. Well, here, that's a good segue, right? So, okay. The segue is when you think about the arc of a of the sales cycle, right? I don't know somebody till they trust me and they're doing business. And we talk a lot about, you know, somewhere between six and 12 conversations in 2020 or 2021, that might be two or three conversations over two or three weeks. In this market, that's probably going to be closer to 10 over two or three months, right? Sometimes it was like one or two calls one call. and they're, yes. yeah. And they're, they're in a pinch and they yes. know that they, they're going to give that first call. They're going to give you an opportunity because they already know that 10 people before you have failed at securing a truck. Exactly. And that's okay. Right. Yeah. The point is right. When you know the sales cycle is long, you are go, you should be thinking about it differently. Your expectations are, right? So let's talk a little bit about follow-ups, right? Everyone says, well, what do I say in a follow-up? Where do I start? Here are the things you don't want to say. You don't want to call and announce yourself again and say, hey, this is Ben Kowalski calling from ABC Logistics. Remember I talked to you five weeks ago? What do I sound like? Even (laughs) if I did talk to them three weeks ago or two or whatever it is, right? Like it's, I'm it's back not a very genuine one. call. And I, I, you made me think of something because it's something I want to add in on the opening. And again, this is different for everybody, but I just about every phone call I have, whether it's sales related or if I'm just call, like if here's a great example, non freight related, if you have to call a customer service person and you know, your experience could end up being freaking terrible, but you want help them to get through to a supervisor. Yep. I try to like have some sort of humor right at the beginning of the conversation to break the ice. Like, Oh, yes. like, uh, hello. Um, this is so-and-so. Um, hi, this is, you know, my name's Nate. Um, I was wondering blah, 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 blah. And then they ask you a question, if, you know, but eventually you get to the point of like, um, I'll ask like, Hey, how's your day going so far? Yes. And then they'll, you know, they'll say, uh, you know, it's fine. How about you? And I'll, and I'll throw something in like, man, it'd be a whole bunch better if the bills didn't get their ass whooped last night. Yes. You know There's what I mean? like, a pivot, and again, right? But it could be anything. It could be, um, you know, if I didn't get dragged to three kids' birthday parties this past weekend, you know, or whatever, yep. whatever's relevant to you. And you usually get a chuckle out of it. Like one of the guys that I did a cold calling blitz with a few months ago, his, he, I can't remember what the saying was, but whenever he would always say, hey, this is so-and-so, how are you? Like, you know, he just went right to, how are you? And I think you yep. did the same thing on our first mail call. Um, and when they, when they would say, good, how are you? He had some response that just every single person laughed at it. And it, it broke the ice. And I was like, man, that's pretty smart. Like everything I always do is related to like Buffalo, you know, whether it's the yeah. weather being cold or the bills losing or, you know, just anything. <laughs> right. Um, but you can have whatever your own little tagline is and make people chuckle over it and kind of break the ice. Here's my, so. f- here's my, one of my go-tos is like statistically, most people 
are looking forward to their day being over or their week being over, right? So when somebody says, how's it going, right? Like I intentionally smile when I say it. So it doesn't sound like I'm complaining. I'm like, oh, be a whole lot better if it was five o'clock. I don't know. How's your day coming along, right? Right. Like that cheesy little cliche. And usually, usually you will hear the person go, oh, tell me about it. My day's been rough. Boom. There's my opening. Tell me a little bit about it. What's been going on over there, right? There's my opening, right? Yep. Hey, if it's Thursday or Friday, week's almost over. Can't wait till the weekend. How's yours coming along? Oh, let me tell you about it. Oh, hey, what do you got planned this weekend, right? That little pivot and opening, right, are the ones you're looking for to be able to transition that conversation, to your point, to something that is more personal and something that somebody's going to have an actual conversation about. Yeah, and uh, keep in mind the the... The amount of personal detail that you should be asking about or expecting to talk about is going to depend heavily on how well this person knows you. If it's your first time talking to them, I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't be asking about what their kids do for uh, sports because um, you sound really creepy. But if you yes. call the same person all the time and you're trying to get through, um, yeah, by all means, I think that's that's a great way to do it. So, but that is another great segue into follow ups. So people say, "What do I say in a follow up?" Right? Well, it really depends on what you said on the previous phone call. So, yes. And I'll add in, you can spend that first two minutes talking about all that filler stuff that we just talked about yep. because you've got a report and reputation or you've got a report and relationship with them already. You can talk about, Hey, how was the weekend? How was, you know, did you see the game right. last night or, you know, how, you know, how did it go with so-and-so you mentioned that she had a soccer tournament. You know what I mean? Like you can, you can play yes. into those, um, rapport points that you've already got established for sure. Right. And that's the best category, but for sure, in every phone call, I try to get one piece of future information so that when I follow up, I have something to follow up on. And if you'll remember at the beginning of this, when I role played, I talked primarily about the past and then I used the past to tie it into the future. I said, when were you guys the busiest last year? When did you guys see a peak, right? Hey, it's, you know, second week of April. So well, this is now what I'm going to use to follow up, right? When I call in two weeks or in 10 days, it's, hey, how are things shaping up? I know you said you guys are, you know, planning to uh, ramp up in the next two, three weeks when I talked to you last. You guys still scheduling for that? How the order starting to shape up? Are you guys lining up for what you expected, right? It gives yeah. me a reason. I don't have that reason unless I set it up in the call before. Yes, I agree 100%. And I think I've used this phrase before, but I heard one time someone said, like, don't use the phrase, I'm just touching base. I mean, it was like touching base should only be for baseball and softball or something like that. Yes. And I thought it was good because like, it is like, I, I never say that to people. Ever. And it's a pet peeve of mine now when I hear it because I'm like, it is such a, like, it, it is such like a, just a fake sounding blah, like yeah. pet have a reason to call me. Um, if someone says, Hey, I'm just calling. I wanted to catch up with you. And it's like, you know, a friend or something like that. That's one thing. But like, if it's like, you know, when someone is trying to sell you on something, Hey, just call exactly. and touch base. How's things going? Yeah. It Fine. means, Hey, where's your money at? Is it check yeah. in the mail? Did you buy that yet? Did you send me that load? Right. That's what that really means. That's the underlying meaning. Right. But to your point, if at all possible, I am trying to get something personal because again, if I can play on that, you're going to be more comfortable talking to me. And if you can talk to me like a coworker was my real goal, as if somebody that is sitting next to you that you've worked with and you're used to talking to, now I can at least trust what you're telling me is more than likely true. And you're going to give me a lot more valuable information. And again, this sounds counterintuitive. I'm talking to you about either your kids or your kid's birthday party in three weeks or your anniversary or your birthday or a vacation or a trip. It doesn't matter, right? If I right. get you to talk about the weekend, I can probably get you to talk about something. Hey, you got any trips planned in the, you know, in the spring? You guys doing anything? You got any hobbies, right? If I get you to talk about that, I'm not going to call you and say, hey, Nate, I was calling to see how your kid's fourth birthday was two weeks from now. But again, after that filler, when I'm talking to you, I'm like, hey, you know what? As you were talking, I completely forgot. Didn't you tell me your kid's birthday was coming up? Did you, did you have that or was that next week? I might have the date in my CRM as to your kid's birthday because you told me, but I'm still going to make it not seem creepy as if like I am literally following you on Facebook or whatever to see when your children's birthday is. But it's now I conversational. I like to add those at the end of a call too. 
Yeah. So like you get through business and the reason I like it at the end, not saying that you can't have it anywhere else, but you end the conversation on a positive, like personal yes. touch. Like if you know, like one of the big ones for me is always um, typically sports related. So if I know the person is into, let's say the Dallas Cowboys, you know, and it's football season, I would say like, Hey, how do you think they're going to do this weekend against Philly or something like yep. that? You know what I mean? You know, and they give you the whole breakdown on what their their analysis is going to be on the game. Um, and they're not thinking about work anymore. They're thinking about no. like, I love they're happy. football, right? Dopamine you know? it's firing in their brain. All that oxytocin. Remember how you make them feel. That's a, it's a really important thing to remember is people will remember how you made them feel way more than what you said to them. So good stuff. Which again, and I don't want to wrap this up, but like it did remind me to that point, right? The other thing is like, even if somebody is giving you all the time and they're continuing to talk to me, like I still will end the call before they do. Right. Because again, if you think about it, people that keep you on the phone longer than you wanted to be, even your friends or your family, the people that keep you on the phone the longest, do you answer every time they call or do you only answer when you know you have enough time to give them, to talk to them because you know you can't just abruptly end it, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something I don't think a lot of people think about. It really hit me actually when I moved to Florida was all my friends up north. What I noticed was we wouldn't talk as much for this reason. They're at work, I'm at work, or when I'm driving, they might only have 10 minutes. So like we would only talk when we had like time to actually connect. But a couple of my friends, we got into this habit of, we just kind of got used to the fact that we're both busy. So we would call each other when we have time, but we were both okay if the other person said, I got to run. You didn't need to have another three minutes of conversation explaining why you have to run. Like yeah. my buddy, Ben, he's just like, dude, I got to bounce. I'm like, cool. I hang up, he hangs up. That's literally the end. So we talk more frequently because we know if we either of us has to go, we're not going to keep the other person there and the other person doesn't feel bad, right? So for me, like that's one of the takeaways. <laughs> there goes your camera again. I know. <laughs> anyway, is again, another one of the thought. things that I try to like use on a day-to-day -day basis, like in prospecting, because I know that helps them be more likely to answer my phone when I call them to follow up, right? So I'm yep. always leaving, even when I've got probably more time to talk to them, because again, I want to leave them in a place that doesn't feel like I took a lot of their time. I want to leave them feeling happier than I found them, or at least pleasant about the conversation, right? Because I know I've got four more phone calls with this person before they're going to trust me enough with their business. So yes. I'm playing into the timeline. Again, 2020, different timeline. I'm probably going to be a little more aggressive because the expectation is you need something and I probably know you do. Now... I know you don't need anything immediately, so I need your trust before you're going to take business from someone else to give it to me. Yeah, so I want to 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 summarize this. I want to go through um, the opening and then the actual prospecting prospecting part of the call, just so we can give some clear, usable um, takeaways here. So your opening and people differ on their thoughts on. Um, scripts. I'm not a fan. And I will tell you that like do this in front of a mirror or just to yourself in your head, but, and then try it out on the phone, but have a few different openings that you use. And we, you heard a couple today, you know, Ben, the one that you gave was, um, Hey, I was, I don't, I don't remember now. Like, Hey, it, Hey, it was just, uh, I got well, a couple here, drivers. That's important. So here's why I do that. Right. If I say I'm calling for a couple carriers, it's not you versus me in the conversation. There's a third party. Me and the carrier. And, oh, yeah. and I'm calling on behalf of them. Look, hey, man, I don't even know if we'd be a fit to work together, but I did tell them I would give you a ring because they've asked me. And that changes the whole dynamic, too. Yeah, it's ambiguous, mysterious. Like, you you know, you could be a, a dispatcher, like an independent dispatcher. You could be working for the trucking company. You could be a freight broker. There's all kinds of stuff. But so like, you know, a couple of options are you can you can say you're calling on behalf of drivers. Um, you can say that you have trucks in the area because that's like the one that everybody says. Um, you can do the, hey, you know, this is Nate with ABC Company and leave it at that. And if they want to ask what ABC Company does, yeah, you know, we work with a bunch of different companies, you know, some different shippers helping them find capacity. But you can kind of like leverage in or uh elaborate into it um you could say 
This is John Doe at ABC Logistics. If you want to go that route, you'll probably find that with some customers, that's the end of the call right there because they they don't want to handle, they don't want to deal with uh, your call. Um, you know, whatever it is, you know, you find yours, find your voice in it, whether it's comical or you know you have a serious tone of voice or it's soft, lighthearted. Everybody's going to have a different opening, and if you read off of a script for that first sentence or two sentences. Or if it sounds like you're reading off a script for those first sentences or two sentences, it just starts off the call terribly and, and people can smell that from a mile away. And then beyond that opening, once you've got that person's attention, I always recommend it, when you're new, have a list of questions and they should be broad at first. And then you should have a separate bucket of like very, um, you know, operationally detailed questions that are specific, you know. You're not going to ask somebody when they first get you when you're on the phone with them. You're not going to say like, um, uh, "How many, how many truckloads are you moving per week out of your whatever facility?" You you can get there, but you want to make sure that your conversation is is like headed in the right direction first. So, and those first questions could be to verify that you're talking to the right person, that you understand, uh, you know, your research on them is accurate. That hey, so you guys are shipping. Um, blah, 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 out of this area. Uh, no, I think you got the wrong company. Uh, you know what I mean? So like, yep. I've always done like Excel sheet full of bunch of questions. You can reference it. And then eventually you don't need it anymore. You just know how to have the conversation. But yep. that's my take. And Find again, your opening, think- have realistic questions to ask and no one to end the conversation. So for yeah. sure, man. What else we got on this? I we could go on for freaking hours, but we might might have to just do like a part three on this. Yeah, share it with your put put something in the comments. If there's something specific you want us to cover, you want us to role play, we can absolutely do that in the future. So give us your feedback. Let us know what you think on this and what you want us to cover in the future. My camera is driving me nuts, and I can't stand it out of the corner of my eye. That it just all right. Let's wrap this episode up. Final thoughts, Ben. (laughs) Whether you believe you can or believe you can't. You're right. (laughs) And until next time, go Bills. That wraps up this episode of Freight 360. Check out the show notes for links to anything that we've referenced on this episode. And make sure to visit us online at Freight360.net to see our entire library of episodes, videos, blogs, and more. And make sure to check us out on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily and weekly tips and content. If you'd like your question answered on the show, fill out the contact us form on our site and we'll see you next week.